Imagine uh, charging your electric car like you charge your phone or a data center that can cool itself without using a ton of energy. Mm -hmm. That's the promise of silicon carbide. And that brings us to today's deep dive. Wolf Speed Inc. They are leading the charge in silicon carbide technology. And if you find the world of cutting edge tech as fascinating as we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So. Yeah, so Wolf Speed is really interesting because they're vertically integrated which means they control the entire process of making silicon carbide products. They actually source the raw materials and then they take it all the way through to developing the actual devices. It gives them a huge advantage in terms of quality control and efficiency. So they're not just making a part of the puzzle. They're creating the whole thing. So how do they actually make money? Well, they have two main revenue streams. The yeah. first is their power products division. And this is where they make silicon carbide devices that are used in electric vehicles, fast charging stations, and renewable energy systems. So they're really at the forefront of sustainable technology. Exactly. What about the second revenue stream? Their second revenue stream is their materials products division. Here they produce silicon carbide wafers and epi wafers. These are really the building blocks for all these really advanced silicon carbide devices. And what's interesting is they don't just keep these wafers for themselves. They also sell them to other companies. Oh, wow. So even their competition can benefit from their tech. It shows how confident they are in their leadership in this market. And there's also the sustainability aspect. The silicon carbide products Wolf Speed sold in 2023 alone are projected to save an estimated 72 million metric tons of CO2 over their lifespan. Wow. So they're not just talking the talk, they're walking the walk. Yeah. Now, I've also heard that Wolf Speed has been dealing with some financial issues and some leadership changes. Yeah, let's talk about the leadership first. Wolfspeed has a really experienced team of industry veterans, but their CEO actually recently stepped down. The board is currently searching for a replacement. This transition obviously creates some uncertainty about the future direction of the company. So new leadership could mean a potential change in direction. What about these financial challenges? Yeah, their financials have shown some concerns. They're dealing with mounting losses, their profit margins are declining, and their free cash flow is negative. So they're spending a lot of money trying to build this silicon carbide empire. Isn't that risky? It's definitely a balancing act. They did see revenue growth last year, but projections are actually indicating a potential decline in 2024. They think it will recover in 2025, though. It sounds like a roller coaster. Yeah, the decline is likely due to a combination of factors, slower demand growth and the divestiture of their RF business, which is their radio frequency business. OK, so are there any signs of them turning their profitability around? It's tough to say for sure. Their gross margin, their operating margin, and their net margin are all declining. This is partly due to the cost of running their new Mohawk Valley factory, which is actually the world's largest silicon carbide fabrication facility. Wow. So are there any big red flags for investors to keep an eye on? Well, one that comes to mind is their negative Altman Z-score. This score is used to assess a company's financial health. A score below 1.8 is considered a warning sign of potential financial distress. Unfortunately, Wolf Speed falls into that category. But it's important to remember that this is just one metric at one point in time. Okay. The Stock Analytics YouTube channel. They make these complex financial topics so much easier to understand. Yeah, I love their videos. They're really good at breaking down complex financial concepts and making them accessible. So if you want to learn more about financial analysis and stock market insights, head over to YouTube and search for Stock Analytics. And while you're there, leave a comment and let us know what companies you want us to do a deep dive on next. We love hearing from our listeners. Yeah, we do. Now, getting back to Wolf Speed, they're a fascinating example of a company pushing the boundaries of innovation, but they're also facing some very real challenges. So let's talk about how the market is perceiving all of this. Are investors excited about Wolf Speed or are they a little hesitant? So what's the overall sentiment? Are investors optimistic about Wolf Speed or are they a little bit worried? Um, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag. There are definitely some investors who are very bullish on Wolf Speed. They see their leadership in the silicon carbide market and they see that the demand for energy efficient tech is just growing and growing. They think that Wolf Speed is really well positioned to capitalize on that. So they're betting that Wolf Speed is going to be a key player in this whole green tech revolution. Yeah, exactly. But then you have other investors who are a little bit more hesitant. They're worried about those financial challenges that we talked about. And they're a little unsure about this leadership transition. Right. It's a bit of a risk versus reward situation. Are there any specific indicators of this uncertainty in the market? 
Well, their stock price tells a pretty interesting story. In 2024, their stock actually dropped by like 85%. That kind of dramatic drop definitely shows that there's a lot of mixed feelings about the company. Wow, that's a huge drop. It sounds like investors are waiting to see if Woolspeed can deliver on their promises. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, who's actually in control of this company? What's the ownership structure like? Most of Wolfspeed's shares are actually owned by big institutional investors like BlackRock and Vanguard. Oh, wow. The big players? Yeah, exactly. Those are the big players in the investment world. And their investments in Wolfspeed suggest that they have some confidence in the long-term potential of the company. Okay, so the big institutions are betting on Wolfspeed. What about the people who actually work there? Do they own a lot of stock? It's interesting because insider ownership is actually pretty low. Hmm. So the people who are working at Wolfspeed every day aren't necessarily rushing to buy up the stock. Is that a bad sign? It's definitely something to consider. But ultimately, the decision of whether or not to invest in Wolfspeed is a personal one. Each investor needs to look at their own risk tolerance and their own assessment of the company's potential. To help make that decision, let's look at their SWOT analysis. It breaks down their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay. A SWOT analysis? That's a good framework for evaluating a company. What are Wolfspeed's strengths? Well, their biggest strength is that they are the clear leader in silicon carbide technology. They also have a pretty strong balance sheet with a lot of cash on hand. And they have that huge new Mohawk Valley factory, which gives them a ton of manufacturing capacity. So they've got a lot going for them. But what about their weaknesses? Their biggest weakness right now is that they're losing a lot of money. They also have a lot of competition, and they're heavily reliant on the automotive industry. So their fate is tied to the success of the car industry? Pretty much. Okay, so what about opportunities? The demand for silicon carbide is expected to explode in the coming years, thanks to the rise of electric vehicles, renewable energy, and even 5G. These are all areas where Wolfspeed's tech is essential. So they're in the right place at the right time. What about threats? Well, one big threat is the uncertainty surrounding the SheGPS and Science Act funding. This act is supposed to support U.S. semiconductor production, but it's not clear how it will be implemented. So Wolfspeed could be affected by government policy. Yeah. And then there's the general weakness in the industrial and energy markets. And of course, they always have to worry about competition. So it sounds like Wolfspeed is facing a lot of challenges, but they also have a lot of potential. Yeah, it's really a question of whether they can overcome those challenges and achieve their goals. It's a really interesting story. We'll definitely be watching to see what happens next. Yeah, it really goes to show you that even when you have this game-changing technology, you still have to deal with the ups and downs of the market. Exactly, and that's what makes Wolfspeed such an interesting case study. They have this groundbreaking tech, mm. but they're still trying to figure out how to make it profitable in the long run. It's like they're trying to build the car while they're driving it. Yeah, a high wire act for sure. <laughs> so the big question is, will they succeed? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Hmm. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with one final thought. All right, well, think about this. Wolf Speed's tech could really help us create a more sustainable future. But they're facing some serious challenges right now. So can they overcome those challenges and become a leader in the green tech revolution? Or will their ambition be their downfall? That's a great question. And it's something for all of us to think about as we watch Wolfspeed's journey unfold. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into Wolfspeed, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future episodes. We've got a lot more deep dives planned into all sorts of fascinating companies and technologies. And as always, remember that everything we discussed today is just for educational purposes. We're not giving financial advice. Right. Any investment decisions you make should be based on your own research and your own personal circumstances. So do your homework, folks. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep.